Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Muggle Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we're playing as everyone's favorite, Call Me Republic. But this time, even though this is probably like my 10th campaign in TNO, playing as Call Me, we're going to stay and keep uh, Nikolai von Znesensky. Now, we're not starting at the beginning, we could have started, like, r on day one, but I decided, you know what, a lot of stuff in the beginning happens all the time, and I don't really want to show you all that, and really just kind of edit that and stuff like that, so... And if you like it, but if you like to read about these, please go right ahead. Um, I've, I've shown these like so many different times, it doesn't really matter. You can pause the video if you'd like, but we're going to go with the center route with um, the government check and I straight ahead as well. As well, as, and also, almost immediately as soon as I started the campaign, because I've read through all these focuses before, but when I started the campaign, I pretty much immediately cut Z ties with the Zidanev, in which this focus was auto bypass, which is very good for us. Thorn in our eyes no longer here, but reinforce the center. If you like to read about that one, please go right ahead as well. And then, if you'd like to read about the face of the movement, please go right ahead as well about Svetlana Stutlana. Svetlana Stalina. And if you want to read about appealing to Comey, please go right ahead. And Suslov suppresses the manifesto, show them all. As well as, it is time the government approach natives. So overall, in this campaign, I'm going to be jumping around quite a bit by like going to war with people. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, and stuff like that, just because I've done this a whole bunch before, so it's nothing too serious, but... We're definitely going to stay with Voznesinski, finally. And what is this one? Uh, you know what? I'm going to read this one. Sergei approached Kosichin, who was hastily leaving the government building, as if he had somewhere he had urgently had to go. As always, he was in a formal clothing, even in a normal day in office. Initially, Sergei went unnoticed, but Kosichin eventually realized he was running behind him. The bureaucrat was looking worried when he began speaking to the leader of the liberal movement. Sir, have you thought about this Comey program, though? Specifically, I'm quite worried about including Voznesinski in this. You must have heard of what he said in the past. He's not known for his kindness and his respect to minorities. He, heck, he's even called them traitors. Uh, Kosygin seemed not to particularly be worried about this, as of, almost as if he didn't care. If you let him organize this, our public image could take a hit. Imagine when our political opponents hear the enemy of the native, Comey, has decided to respect the culture. It would be a scandal. Kosygin barely raised an eyebrow and calmly replied, Don't worry. Everything's being under control. You were overreacting, that's all. Before Sergei could reply, Kosygin already left the building. We need to be careful with this program. Also, b before we got rid of... Uh, uh, Zidanev, yeah, we cut ties not with Zidanev, but we cut ties with Zidanev very early on. I did do the whole poverty thing, so we get some better poverty rate. And moving the department, um, let's see, if you want to read about this one, please go ahead. Cooperate with Von Zidanev in the program. Eh, include him, why not? Because we can. He's on the radio. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. Uh, actually, you know what? No, we all read this one. Good morning, Sift of Cards. We are back today for a daily round table where we discuss the latest developments in the country's political stage, and today we have quite an interesting story from our own president, Voznesensky. My friend Igor is here to explain what has happened. Oh, thank you. Last night we received tape recordings from a source that would like to remain anonymous and contain excerpts of private dialogues made between the president and some of his party associates, even including prominent faces of the Senate coalition we are all familiar with. Why don't we hear them? Voznesensky's voice was heard slightly corrupted. The call me, the darn call me, do you have any? Idea how much this messes up our plans? We can't corrupt it. And all, that is all because of our natives. Their economies, I tell you, traitors to the country, all of them. One day we'll deal with this problem for they are for our republic. And that's what I call <coughs> uh, a darning interesting recording. In light of the recent developments, it makes Vosnesinski all the more hypocritical, publicly supporting a program to help the natives, yet insulting them indiscriminately behind closed doors. Let us hear your thoughts, listeners. This is Radio Free Sick of Cards setting off. Protection money? Anyone wonder about that, please go ahead as well. Cool. That's right. And the Civil Rights Act was uh, gone and signed, which is fine. But we do want to make sure that we don't have... Oh, nice. We get that one. We have no political power and make sure we max out on growth. Because right now... Oh, look at that. We could underdo a little bit more. Nice. Not great. But could be a lot, lot worse. Uh, we'll do that one. And maybe new workers next. Face the movement. And then let them burn themselves out. If you want to put that, please go ahead too. Yeah, Tino's definitely lagger than it was... In the past, but whatever. Warlord of Event. I said this before and I'll say it again. This is actually really good to do for later on. Um, external investments. Very good. Very, very good. But I want to wait till near the end here. Uh, must be darkness within her. Uh, I see it's a darkness within her. Why not? Because we can. Because we can. As we're trying to get more divisions, Gossagen endorses Selena's plan. Let them associate freely. Could this be a violation of party unity? Uh, let them associate freely. Why not? If they want to associate, who are we to stop them for now? We do have 60 army XP, which is not bad. The Comey Republican Navy, though. You want to know about that? And a packed in secret. Please go right ahead. Let's hope it isn't you. Oh, Boston well, Nessensky needs more influence then. Oh boy. Oh boy. I mean, still 64, 46, 27, 71 is pretty darn good. 
Um, I'm not really super worried about that. However, I would like people starting to attack us. And we need to keep as much political power as possible. Children of play. Oh, there you go. If you want to know about that, please go ahead as well. Happy October, everybody. Happy, happy October. And keep going with more research speed as we're drinking some coffee, too. We can only, only get... Wow. 0.25 political power. Holy crap. But, natural spirits. The fall of terror bombing. A place for all of us. Not bad. The Clash of Shadows really does kind of suck. And the Sictivacar Arsenal. If you're wondering about the Sictivacar Cultural Revival, please go right ahead. And the Interlude. If you're wondering about the Chaos Increases, please go right as well. Uh, let's see. Let me map that. The decision finally be made. You know what? I think it would be best if I read this one. The regular sound of pistol shots and yelling helped set the tone for the meeting. Vosnesensky, Malichev, Gregorenko, and all the other associates were discussing the latest news. An uptick in street violence between left-wing and right-wing paramilitaries. Sure, since more blood has been spilled on the streets, the Democratic Party has been conducting meetings between them and their paramilitaries to see what should be done about the situation. This is the perfect opportunity, Gregorenko yelled, slamming his fist on the table in a display of masochism. These idiots are fulfilling their bloodlust against each other and draining their numbers. If we go out on the streets now, then we should be able to destroy them all. Why the heck should we risk injuring our five men if they're just going to injure each other already? Vosnesensky replied back. They'll just start using more drastic methods, even killing each other. No need to deploy anything. You two, as usual, assume that, that we have to do every... Either everything to stop them or nothing at all. Have you ever considered simply helping them moving the process along? Escalating the situation? Do certain actions and blame them on opposing ideology? Strike from the shadows? These are the kinds of things that we need to do in order to succeed. Think about it. As the screaming and the gunshots continued, this meeting wrapped up, a decision finally arrived. Why don't you not interrupt the, their enemy in the process of making a mistake? Yeah, pretty much. If your enemies are making mistakes, don't don't bother them. An ideological bo abomination. If you want to put that, please go ahead. The dragon reveals itself. Nice. No need to panic. If you want to put that, please go ahead as well. And the memories of home. I miss you. Cool. Nice. And this is the division of the fragile alliance that we have right now. Embrace of moderates. Nice. If you want to put that, please go ahead. Twelve combo with is definitely not ideal, in which we will have to make these guys a little thicker if we really want them to do well, so. Infantry, infantry, and infantry. Could cost way more manpower and guns, but whatever. May the demands dance of democracy go smoothly. At least 18 combo with me, removing the cancer. If you want to do this, please go right ahead. Nice. And maybe these guys, too, that we're actually using as well, but we'll see. Yeah, we're going to lose a lot of manpower now. Not ideal, but oh well. Um, anyone have loot here? No? We can scavenge for some, which is always good. Ukta. That's because we did raid uh, St. George's, I think, even these guys. Like, we've raided a few of these. Uh, not up standards. If you remember that, please go ahead as well. Bing, bong, boom. And then we'll do the Equal Zoning Act. They're prepping for election week. All of them. Yay! Let us raid. Or let someone raid us. I want someone to try to attack us. And you know what, honestly, I'm probably going to have to just do... When we do... Flowers? Um, when we do, try to unite all this, I'm probably going to do a lot of off-screen, because it's just so annoying to do. Period. So, we'll see. I might do, go really well for us, it might not, so we're really poor right now. We get at least up to fair, which would be nice. Just want to raid more, please. Please, let us raid. And we're probably going to end up losing our IFVs, which... We're not making any IFVs, I don't really care. I don't really like IFVs that much. Especially since, uh... TN updated a no-step-backed uh, patch for Hoi 4. History of a Republic. We must know where we come from. The Comprehensive Zoning Bill Reform. Very nice. And then Coalition Negotiations. Well, to keep us safe from Seslov. Nah. Best to be in Gumilov's good books. Or we have no need for enemies of the Republic. Eh, I don't want to lose all that political power. Do I lose stability or political power? Honestly, I'd rather lose stability for now. Can we always increase stability later? Probably. Yeah, we definitely can increase stability. Political power is actually extremely hard to get. Um, uh, let's see, I'd rather empower the right because it's slightly worse. So, uh, slightly decreases, uh, slightly decreases universal franchise. I'm not going to lose stability. I don't I mean political power. Do that one, that's fine. 70, we're still 71 here. So, we'll go and do this one. We'll choose the official senator candidate for the 1963 elections, and then we'll probably do election day preparations. And there we have it, have it everybody. V Vaz Nesinski has won the nomination. And I kind of already clicked off that, that uh, event or, for y'all to read, but my bad. But if you're going to read about the dual disappointment, please go ahead. But Vaz Nesinski is going to be our daddy. If you like to read about the district, though, please go right ahead as well. Every election is determined by the people who show up. Yeah, I thought that was more determined by the people who count the votes, but who, who am I? 
Who am I? Oh, we have this too. Oh, we did try to raid Velogda as well, so that's actually really nice. Uh, deficit's quite high. Unfortunate. Growth is 3%. Not bad. And set off defects. Oh, boy. A pleasure to meet you, comrade. Nice. I love Ordo Socialism. And happy 1963, everyone. Actually, what is our cap for this? 59%, 120%. That's not bad. Bulgaria starts with Germany. Election day preparations. Ensure internal stability. We'll also do that one. We want more stability, even though I heard our stability earlier. I'd rather that we get more stability. So if you don't know about ensure internal stability, please go right ahead. Not bad. Making an example, if you don't know about that, please go right ahead. A traitor's do. Ooh. Wow, the left is really not going to be empowered here, are they? 68. Wow, that's quite high, actually. 50 is not great, but, you know. Yeah. We haven't even talked about Tabaritsky. Oh, Tabby. Tabby Daddy. If you want to do this, please go ahead. And we need people to vote. Um, decreases. I'm not going to lose political power. Whatever we do, I will. I refuse to lose political power. So, if you want to read about, of course, this one again, please go ahead. If you want to read about calculating the bombing intervals, please go ahead. And protecting the people. As well as watch radicals. Please go right ahead, as well, as well as Municipal Pacification Act. Why not? Preparing for the bombings. Now comes the time to decide the location where the polling places should be. There are many safe locations where polling booths would be right to fit in. Places that are safe from German bombers and political extremes, while we'll definitely make use of these locations. We do have some more or less safe choices. Choices. We can make some strategic mistakes and place polling stations or places in disagreeable neighborhoods and more exposed, dangerous locations. That way we can encourage or discourage some people who might not want to vote and ensure the safety of our power in the elections. Uh, whoops. Political power? Yes, please. Oh, yes, please. I was trying to get train new workers. And yeah, 73 still not bad. Not bad at all. 64 for the right wing. Um, anything here we really care about? As much as I want to do this stuff. 80% chance of military professional and societal development begins to slowly improve. It's nice and all, but it's just not worth it. Strong investments, like I said, we'll do that later on. So, overall, not bad. We're still trying to make another division, but we just need, like, something here. 36 more guns. Yeah, we're out of a lot of guns. Watch them radicals. Hey, if you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. Perhaps a bug in Shafarovich's home is alright. Or this one. Oh, well. If we do this political power, we're going to hurt the... Which one are we going to hurt? We're going to hurt the right. Yeah, that'd be nice. Cool. And we'll do minority representation. If you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. Whee! Yay! And the last one we'll do is, of course, Into the Unknown. So if you're about this one, please go ahead once more as well. Very good. And we did raid, I think... Was it these guys up here? I think it was Plastic. Which is actually very, very nice. I love raiding so much. But the debt is still getting... Well, it's still climbing. 3.5%, not bad. Inflation, 1%. Oh, we're free market capitalists, huh? Not bad. Not bad whatsoever. Could use some trucks, though. My goodness, could we use some trucks? What are we missing here? Lots of guns. What if we just did this? Can we deploy this division immediately? No. Well, it did help out with the guns quite a bit, and then we'll do Into the Unknown. If you're going to build a man, a minority representation belt, please go ahead. And one last promise as well. Uh, political power is not bad. Decreases influence of Osnesinski. Decreases influence. Definitely don't want that one. Learn some lessons here. Get more political power. That's fine. Uh, train, 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 scavenge for loot. Let's see, he's at 64, 47, 29, that's pretty good. Uh, that's not bad, yeah, it's not bad. And Soslav has very significant influence on the left. Zidana should be low. Actually, Zidana's still alive, we did cut him off. Yeah, he's still going quite a bit every single day. Wow, sick to the car arsenal's not bad, but not great. I want to prove poverty even better, though. Hmm. It's alright. Ooh. Order St. George. Oh, yes. Sign us up for the Daddy St. George Arenos. Wow, what is this? Oh, it's railroads. Oh, I can't even tell it's railroads. Also, we were building up and we're still building up an army base, so. There's that going along. Let's go. Oh, and there goes Central uh, Asia. No, Central Siberia. Now they're killing each other. Come on. Let us raid you. I want the. We need the army XP really badly. Let us raid you. Please. Do not pay the tribute. Please do not pay the tribute. God dang it. I just said don't do that. Violence of the Poles. Oh, no. Who could have seen that one coming? 69.2%. Nice. I this, I, my goal this time was to make sure that every single one of these got at least an increase except for admin efficiency and professionalism. So. Oh, 
And look at this, a third inauguration of President Vosnesensky. Despite it all, Vosnesensky stood before the National Assembly as president once more. Was it because of a desire not to disturb Komi's fragile peace, or was it because of some hidden, deeper quality Vosnesensky possessed that made him stand above the other candidates? Either way, Vosnesensky was now president once again, giving an inaugural speech before the National Assembly once more. Within his speech, he laid out his plans for Komi's future. My fellow citizens of the Republic, we must seek unity, not strife. Our Republic must stand strong and unite against those who seek to destroy it, whether these threats come from within or without. We must stand united and strong under the banner of democracy. We must stand strong under the banner of Marx. The DSNP and myself seek the establishment of socialism within our Republic, and under my second term we will continue to prepare Comey for a transition towards socialism. Under the DSNP, Comey has seen remarkable progress, and continuation of our program can only further improve Comey in order to make it truly great. We must stand further against factionalism, stand against those who seek to divide us. We must stand against aversion and bloodshed. We must stand together, together for Comey. We must stand for the Republic. While well, certainly a passionate speech, some critics are worried about this means that uh, President Valsnesinski wishes to simply stay his, his previous path, and are worried that Comey is destined for yet more scandals and yet more corruption. Nevertheless, only time will tell if President Valsnesinski was the right choice for Comey. The people have spoken. Is that really a center position? Pushing for socialism? Really? You sure? You sure about that? I don't know, man. Even social democracy could be considered a stretch. Maybe? Maybe? That depends on who you ask, I guess. It's all relative until it's not relative at all. Minority rule. Oh boy, we're going to go that. Please go ahead. Dark of the head. Violence of the poles. And eh, we don't need to buy that stuff. A loots. Hmm. Well, we literally just raided these guys, so. Yep, victory in Turkey. Sunrise over a sective car. Well, please go ahead with that. Please go ahead. Forever on the same team. Even up, even on name. You've got a woman. Bah, behais, Boran, Behaiche. I have no idea. I've never seen this person at the win before. Please go that. Please go ahead. Rejects Jamaican, Jamaican independence bit. I really would love to play as Turkey sometime. But after this, I think we got one for everything, so we'll keep going with the equipment. So, should all be going up pretty much. The critical point. And go that. Please go as well. It might be too late. A victory for democracy? After counting every vote, it turns out the Democrats have received a plurality of the vote. Even more surprising to Comey citizens, it seems that the moderates have decided to go it alone without a clear majority of the delegates, the resulting government is destined to be an extremely weak one. Yet the parties of the center and center left to center right have decided to gamble that neither the far left nor far right will dare to cause a vote of new confidence so soon after elections. Perhaps the far left and far right militias will give the government at least a month to live. Maybe. Direct action. Secure the republic. Legitimacy is good. Ah, uh, legitimacy game, what well, now we have to do that stuff. Ah, uh, secure the Republic. Lowering some unfortunate extra legal violence by paramilitaries. The biggest threat to the new coalition government is simple vote of no confidence by fascist or communist deputies. The new government's first order of business is thus to spend every scrap of influence and diplomacy to gather enough confidence and supply agreements to save float for the year. By guaranteeing that the government will not fall while trying to pass a budget, the moderate coalition hopes to gain some time. We need more uh, legitimacy. Ooh, that's not that's not bad, actually. That's actually really good. You get 10% more stability. That's really strong. So right now, oh my goodness, we get no political power. Um, it's really flipping strong. That's when we withdraw forces, you get more, slightly more political power back. Well, you we don't get any at all, actually. Sabotage on the roads. If you don't have that, please go ahead. I'm not going to touch that. Not bad. It's got a lot of people are extremely fragile democracy. If you're going to go that, please do. Please go ahead. Do that and then do that too. So now what we're going to do is this. Ah, just deploy it. Screw it. Stupid division. Should have deployed earlier than that. But we're going to crack down on instability because increase the legitimacy by 10, which is not bad. But more importantly, you get. You get a lot of stability, and that's really good. So, we'll do this. Do that, and we'll be good. Secure the Republic. Uh, the defense plan. The fascist, or no, the Democratic coalition would not trust the fascists and communists with a bucket of warm piss, let alone believe their empty platitudes about respecting the minority government for at least a year. As such, extra precautions are being taken to make sure every single member of the government is free from extreme ideology. Equally important is being able, absolutely certain that no one in the coalition can be blackmailed. Will the ensuing consequences be disastrous? Protest against the government. If you want to go that, please go ahead. How much more can the people take? For the survival of the Republic. 
Alex, Alex calls the gym and stares enthusiastically at the meeting table. It is not the nice warm bed with a glass of warm water he was hoping for, especially after the chaos of the evening. The dossier on his desk covers an expected topic, blanketed on the cover like an obscene joke. Radicalism and call me. He flicks through the pages, his frown intensifying at the red names and cancellations on some of the pages, evidently taken from the Democratic Coalition's own census rolls. There are quite a few cancellations. Klaus Nelsinski has a smile drip off his face, and he faces the assembly men with little more than a ghost of a facial tick. He has at least the courage to be honest, even if what he is saying will make their jobs far harder than before. Morozov spoke to me this morning, after the end of the debate. He says some of his men have lost confidence in the coalition, and they're writing the letters as we speak, and after tomorrow, we will lose about 30 men. These men are, were, our majority in the parliament. We will move to formalize relations with the communist and passionary party in tomorrow's session. There are still options. We are, after all, the incumbent. And our policies, while leading the majority rule, are not entirely dependent on it, and after that... He stops, but the meaning in his silence is clear. It is unthinkable. The Democrats have come with plotting the arrest of the opposition, and yet perhaps it is a necessary option. Kosygin rides the tide of opinion. He clears the sort. We should collaborate. They might be of use to us. They are radicals, and we're incumbents. Ignore them. False charges are easy. Restoring democracy is not. Nice. Extending coalition. Even with the vaguest assurances that the government is free from outside pressure, the internal pressure from within the coalition is also needs to be kept in check. When a single living thing on the thinnest of political edges is de here, a single de uh, single deputy defecting could have disastrous consequences on the government. And so a generous amount of ministries and positions have to be doled out to every coalition partner with the biggest political party keeping a few choice offices for themselves against the unrest. If we're going to survive this avalanche of dissent that's flooded our streets, we need a plan. Currently, this we control very little, and the dissidents control a great deal. With this in mind, there are two prevailing ideas we can attempt that would ease the situation flip, or see the situation flip. And the first is simply to see the majority of the territory, which we'll never be able to patrol completely, in order to build up defenses and fortifications in crucial government buildings and factories. From there, we can begin setting out combat groups to put down any potential rebellions. The second plan is more offensive. The idea is to set out pacification teams to quash rebel activity in more rebellious neighborhoods before any dissent can form. But if we choose, we've got to do it quickly. Lose 75 manpower. Eh, I don't want to lose political power. Whoever's going to lose political power, I don't really care too much. We'll get stability in the end, but... Better legitimacy to decay, still in a speech. Among the Moderate Coalition's few blessings is the backing of Svetlana Stalina. The charismatic woman is popular both in the Democratic factions and without throughout Comey's electorate. By having to go on the public offensive against the commies and fascists, there is some very needed breathing room could be created for the Democratic faction. Stalina is already well known for disliking the ideologues and fanatics that impede Comey's progress yet. Some within the government worry about the rumors of the young woman's ambition. Many worry that her honeyed words might be in the end poison the young republic. In the short term, however, the Coalition must play all of its cards. Public discontent arises. What are laws, justice, and government other than a product of a mass popular consensus? All it takes to destroy even these institutions have seen, that seem immense and all-encompassing is a gradual loss of people's faith in them. Comey's institutions are new and brittle, and in the face of a crisis of legitimacy, they are starting to shatter. The public attitude towards authority has changed noticeably for the worse, much to the chagrin of Comey's policy, police and elected officials. Neighborhoods have walled themselves off, driving away officers and relying on each other and sometimes ra radical paramilitaries for security. The message is clear that people no longer trust the government to help them. If Comey's republic or government is to survive in its current form and needs to reaffirm its, to its populace, that's able to protect them. Then the slow collapse of the police authority is much of and is much of a much of selective car confirms our public is a long way off from earning back the public's trust. We must maintain the confidence. Direct action. Left on said in the communist and fascist pledges not to overthrow the government democratically is a danger posed by the paramilitaries. What's a little coup between friends? To prevent such a catastrophe, a small cabal of coalition officials have begun to cook up some extra legal defense of the republic. The communists and fascists fear one another more than they fear the weak minority government. They're surprised that seeing the bench warmers last shot might just be what the coalition needs to survive. Um, I'm sure I've read this one before, too. If you're going to read this, please go ahead. Direct action, acquire the information. As the fascists and communists plot each other's destruction, the coalition governs secret security committees begin to ramp up its intelligence network. Uh, Soslov and Gumilov are slippery eels, yet many of their subordinates fail to live up to their boss's secrecy. By bribing small-time agents of both sides, a sizable pot of information can be built up on both factions. Speed is of the essence, as a simultaneous strike at both sides. Uh, if you're going to this, please go right as well. Oh, well, that sucks. It didn't really work for us. Yet. Dang it, that sucks. Um, it's critical for us, so... With the center's power... And going to this as well, please go ahead. And we're doing okay. Direct action. 
the radicals and extremists hold a majority in our legislature, and threaten to destroy our democracy. Radical paramilitaries have been militarizing and arming themselves at unprecedented levels. The chances of a faction oust ousting your government are too great for us to remain passive. We must strike against the radicals and remove their fangs. The question is, which faction do we target? Both the left and the right pose a threat to the republic, but our sources are stretched thin, too thin, to shut down both factions. We must choose carefully and determine who's the true enemy of the republic. Well, neither one. Most likely comes from the right wing. Correct on the right, then. Surround the neighborhoods. To a casual observer. It might seem like Comey's Republican army is completely compromised. It's an officer corps riddled with Sussilite plants and many of its best regiments, crewed by mercenaries of suspect loyalties. Yet, legally speaking, the army's chain of command leads to civilian government at all times. Now that the government has intel, army units have been arranged in crucial neighborhoods around the city. By moving rapidly, it's likely that neither side will have time to use their army contacts before it's too late. I thought, at this point, we're supposed to get a lot more political power than nothing. It's a bit extreme. Like... The game is, I think, purposely screwing us over, but, you know, whatever. Usually you have way more. In order to curb the influence of the radicals within our republic, we need information to act upon. Locations of army caches, or arms caches, incriminating documents and positions of paramilitary commanders. In order to learn these details, we must read the HQ of the Communist Party and the Shafeter Fitch's Passionary. Those locations of public knowledge and informants within these buildings can help us find useful intel. While conducting these raids, we have two options for strategy. The first strategy is to grab only what information our spies can verify so that we avoid any contingency plans and false intel the enemy may have planted. It's a less risky option, but also requires more time and will result in less information being gathered. The other strategy is to grab as many files as we can, sort out the contents, and act upon whatever useful information we happen to come across. It'll result in more information being gathered, but obviously riskier. If we come across false intel, our forces can end up stumbling into a trap. The question is, which do we employ? Grab as much as you can. Still, minus 0.5 is very good. A perfect fine. If it seems that we have stumbled across the perfect intel. Document after document detailing the locations of weapon caches, paramilitary commanders, and safe houses. All the information was recent enough to act upon, but barely the information had been encrypted. However, somewhat disturbing uh, were the size of the weapon caches. If no one acted upon this information right away, the enemy will, f will be fully equipped for a coup. We need to seize these weapons and commanders immediately. Anything else is a dangerous waste of time. Luckily, it seems the radicals were expecting a raid upon the HQ, so we should have enough time to strike before they can act. I'll find some good news and preempt the assaults. The telltale sounds of gunfire and artillery slamming across various points of Comey have kept most of the city's inhabitants wanderers outside or out to look for information. The Shah communists and fascists have been woken in the middle of the night by army troops. Both sets of paramilitaries are putting up a violent fight that caused aided by turncoats within the army. No one knows that the government's gambit is likely to succeed or fail. Well, hopefully it succeeds. That's what we're hoping here for. Go in. Do the best you can. And... Hey, the payload should be nice. Still looking pretty good. Looking very, very good. And Comey is strong and stable. Thrones of suspected fascists or communist sympathizers are being marched to various secure prisons around the city. Shocking to dismay cloud the eyes of the defeated paramilitaries, woken in the middle of the night by the toothless coalition government and its soldiers. The minority government has somehow succeeded, in its mission to crush the far right and far left. Some might worry that the city's democracy will forever be stained by the violent crackdowns. These men and women will simply fail to see for the first time since its foundation. Comey's republic is now strong and stable. No longer shall violence and intimidate politicians of the nation. I apologize if I'm, being, if I'm reading very quickly. I'm just... I've read through a lot of this before, so... But... There's a decisive blow. The Republican army forces were mobilizing. The information gained from the radicals will be a decisive blow needed in order to stabilize Comey's democracy. Locations of armed caches and wanted paramilitary commanders will be stormed within just a few hours, before hopefully the enemy can mobilize. The operation will be a multi-pronged attack, with squads being deployed all across Siktivkar and the surrounding countryside. Some locations had to be ignored due to manpower and resource constraints, but the majority could be struck in a reasonable amount of time. If this operation failed, then Comey's Republic will likely not much less, not much less lo longer. It was now or never. Counterstruck. Well, if you want to put that, please go right ahead. No, whatever, who cares? Protest against the government. I think I'll do that too. It's still high, so. Well. Critical instability, huh? Yay! We did it! That's actually really. This is really bad for us. But. Let's see. Ah, no, we are restoring order. The Republic has managed to sail out against most of the dangerous sea. Yet we're not out of the storm yet, for internal enemies are still roaming our borders just as we march to war with external rivals. Caution is the order of the day. Anti-democratic extremists have been severely hurt by repeated losses as we set out to destroy the re our regional rivals. We must also keep up the pressure on domestic threats. For this task, we can thankfully bring to bear the full legal apparatus. Police officers, judges, as well as lawmakers can work in coordination to stamp out poisonous elements. Final victory at home is within a grasp. Once its rears are secure, the army of the Republic will be able to secure... Be able to march to restore democracy to all of Russia. We the paramilitary commanders codify the unwritten rules. It's slowly worsen. Ooh. 
centralized stuff, social democracy, the, ooh. The United Army, that's not bad. Two arms. Or root up here military commanders. For 120 days, which is, you know, not great, but it's only 120 days. Well, that's not bad, too. Re instant, instant weapon regulations. Make an example. Ooh, to order. Admin efficiency begins to improve, which is actually really good. But you do lose a place for all of us, which we do get better, better division organization. And get a lot of stability as well. Honestly, I don't think worsening our admin efficiency is worth it at all. Now, I do not like Clash of Shadows. The Clash of Shadows is really bad for us. That's really not very good at all. Clash of Shadows, that, does it, do we get rid of Clash of Shadows here anyways? Um, you should be able to eventually. No more shadows, though. Sentry car was breathing again. Soldiers were putting down the last fringes of extremist resistance. Locals were rebuilding from the fighting. The president gave a heartfelt rallying speech outside the assembly early this morning. No longer will the left or right threaten an election ever again. For the center survived the impossible. Democracy survived a dangerous trial and has emerged stronger than ever before. Elena and Yevgeny sat on the steps of the National Assembly, both with shot glasses by their side. Perhaps a bit unprofessional, but for the occasion, it was worth a potential hangover and coast scolding. Just like that day in the bar, huh? Yevgeny jokes casually. Your face isn't as red, although perhaps we may need more spirits to deal with the previous chaos, Elena suggests. They to share one genuine hearty laugh. The sun is waking up by this point, with a dim glow of sticktive cars surviving, street lamps fading away to make way for the light. Yet there is brightness abound and plenty of rebuilding to be done. Yeah, Elena and Yevgeny stand up, facing the city around them. The Republic was safe, and this was an effort helped by them. Every hour, every drop of sweat, every inch of ground has led to internal peace. It was worth it for all of them, for all of us. So friends, or or back to foes across the table. Friends, without people like you, even if you are not entirely with me, matter. We promise, after all. No, to nod and shake hands. As they began to head home, they wish for a better tomorrow, one with the wounds of the past long gone. The sun will not stay over Sick car. I want to root up paramilitary commanders. I like this one better, just because you get all that stuff done. You don't get rid of um, Clash of the Thingamabob, but... That should be removed eventually, right? The army of the Republic has long been a pit of snakes. Political extremism within the officer corps was impossible to root out without fatally weakening the democratic government's grip on power. Left to their own devices, fascists and communist officers were free to aid anti-democratic street gangs. Some did so by propagating their doctrines or rank and files of the army. Others used their tactical training to lead street gangs from the shadows. So finally, some served in the army or the training of the paramilitaries. With the far right and far left waning in influence, we can finally remove the service officers and commanders who carry the taint of extremism. The loss of experienced personnel will be worth it as the central government's domestic positions reinforce and the soldiers march out with unity of purpose to face the enemy. Ukta? Oh, Ukta. Oh, they actually have some loot too, huh? Second Philippine Republic, cool. Oh, we're very close to getting an uh, actual thing of land auction. Nice. Very nice, actually. Nice. Should be fine there. Yep, we're going to do fine. Arrest the sources of information. Yeah. Nice. Many ordinary citizens cooperate with extremists, whether out of greed or ideological zealotry. Now that the judicial system is firmly under control and that the extremists and politics have been shackled, we crack down with impunity on collaborators and fellow travelers. The Republic must cast a wide net to arrest all those who contributed to the government's enemies. Those who broke no laws will be intimidated into taking plea deals. Personal finances will be audited. We shall process methodically until all are found guilty or have all betrayed the former collaborators. There should be justice for the victims of political violence. Which is, I don't know, like this route seems like it's probably not going to be the best route to choose, but whatever. Um, Artie. No better Artie. More entrenchment? Yes, please. Daddy, yes. Daddy, chill. Yeah, let's see. Agriculture. Basic mechanization. Mass mechanization would be good, too. I mean, all this stuff would be good, but still. The remnants of the opposition. After a chaotic period of violence, our faction has secured control over the Korean Republic and for now remains safe from any kind of coup attempt. However, that's not to say our position is stable. The lingering remnants of our past political rivals still remain in the country and should, could potentially cause issues if they are left to their own devices. We have no choice but to take preemptive action. We must find these dissenters before they can cause serious damage to our efforts to stabilize the situation. The security forces stand ready to conduct a search on the key targets from several opposing factions suspected to have a presence in the country. The bases of power will weather away without a strong leader of the reign, so surgical strikes 
talking to the head of the dissenting groups is necessary. Once these targets are found, we have a variety of options available for dealing with them. This time, time is off the essence. However, for it is very possible some may try to flee the country before they have a chance to catch up with them. Let's get to work. At this point, you just want to just, just click on all this stuff. We'll get the political power back anyways, so it doesn't matter. Make an example. The Republic does not condemn its citizens at death lightly. However, there must be retribution for those who conspire to end the nation's freedoms of tolerance. Those who have infected sickness car with violence must face justice. Those who have robbed their fellow citizens, those who have injured the innocents, those who have killed un who have killed under the influence of extremism, all must see their sins weighed and face the risk of the greatest retribution of all. The worst of the worst shall be executed. We do not have pity for traitors, and their deaths will hopefully inspire fear among their surviving allies. The Republic's justice is eternal, and its vengeance will not shall not spare the wicked. Order St. George, yes please. It's it weapons regulations. The proliferation of weapons in the Republic has done much to let our enemies operate without fear of retaliation. Also, you wonder about all these, please go right ahead. When a police action against a far a Far right contraband ring runs the risk of a violent gunfight against the equivalent of a platoon of soldiers with, with automatic rifles. Hating polit political criminal gangs becomes hard, becomes impossibly difficult. That is a terrible sentence. Hating political criminal gangs hard becomes impossibly difficult. The central government will introduce the first ever weapons regulation law to the Republic. The law will explicitly ban the possession of heavy weaponry, equally under target will be automatic weapons as well as large magazines. They'll use this law as both a carrot and a stick. Extremists will be able to sell their weapons in a government buyback if they wish to quit politics, and those who hold on to their legal weapons will be breaking the law and thus easy to arrest. Unless those guys shoot back. Alright. Do mm, off. We'll see what happens. Make an example. And then ban un unregistered arms groups. The unlimited access to weaponry. The government will also let you say paramilitaries out of existence. Outside of the army of the Republic, the police as well as a few state-backed militias belonging to a group will be a criminal offense. Those who cling to the paramilitary membership will be arrested on terrorism charges. Those who resist will be shot. This designation of all organizations as terrorist groups will allow us to hit their finances, starving them out of money. Violent confrontation need not end every one of them, as the dwindling money and prestige of paramilitary sees these groups hemorrhaging members and morale. Lose more wars, but we'll get more stability. Not terrible. Oh, and now it's lagging very hard because Germany is killing itself. Yay! We're suing so slow. Let's see, let us let's see him plot his way out of jail. We're gonna do that. Please go ahead. Nice. Plus shadows looking slightly better. And then to order, to order, to order. Uh, for as long as uh, for as long as we have called Tiktok our home. Our rivals of Makomi's Republic is a house of cards, top and rebuilt by ideologues constantly its streets row the blood of the slowly dying government. No more, we have brought the Republic to order. Political extremism has been quelled, and peace and justice are the order of the day. So my question, Komi continually call itself a place for all, in light of the quelled extremism. We stand by the statement, for all are welcome into the house of the governments who will respect its institutions. Secret hospitality is a two-way obligation. Being now rid of those who would threaten others in our midst, we can continue to work on making the Republic a refuge for all Russians in this age of strife. Even though we lose a lot of war support. Well, we're going to lose the war support. We're going to get some more stability, though, too. Admin efficiency goes up, which is... I'd say it's worth it. Because, my gosh, do we need order here. Oh, whoops. Come on. Come on. Don't pay the tribute. No! Fine. Whatever. Scamming for the booty looty. The looty booty. The boot loot. The poop loot. Hopefully someone wants to raid us. We only have seven divisions, but I mean these seven divisions that we do have are not terrible. We have some already too, that's actually really nice. Um you guys are not terrible. You guys already have already on you. How much already do we have? We don't have a lot of manpower, but making these guys any bigger, eh, probably save it for now. Probably best to save it. You know, engineers would be very nice too to order. Yay! Peace. Oh, I thought the game would crash because it, 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 the sound stopped. Oh my god, I got worried there for a second. Oh boy. Um, social democracy, more stability wouldn't be bad. The Republic saved. Rejoice, citizen, for the Republic has been saved. It has taken our government everything to prevent our young nation's fall into extremism. But now that the dust has begun settling, our political system has been repaired and we stand united to face the, against the wider world. 
Soldiers and leaders that had once been only concerned with surviving just another week are now free to turn to the rest of Russia. With the end of the anarchy, many factions will no doubt attempt to impose their control on the lands of the former Soviet Union. Our Republic must stand ready to expand outward in order to crush extremists and find new allies for a fledgling nation. We have crushed the fascists in Comics and Comey, and this experience shall serve us very well. Assemble the armories, that'd be really good to do. This would be good to do as well, the Army of the Republic, because I want to strike out as fast as, as fast as possible. Peace for now is not bad, a new democratic foundation as well is not bad either, but we got to strike out quickly. We really do. Widespread cronyism sucks. Education policy. And now we get probably like no political power. God dang it. Oh, God dang it. Assemble the armories. With the end of the political violence, many armories and weapon caches that were under the control of extremist elements are now open to access. It'll take some time to count everything, but already the available rifles and support equipment can be pressed into service to help equip the Republican army further. To secure as many weapons as possible will also help us douse the embers of political extremism. The days of private militias holding on to weapon stockpiles are finally coming to an end. From now on, the government shall decide who has access to military hardware, and that's that. Infrastructure programs. Now that a map of the Sictive Car no longer resembles a chessboard of districts held by a protein, protein mass of paramilitaries of varying allegiances, we're free to roll out a unified infrastructure plan. Places where the government has not dared send officials in ages can be finally be assessed, improved, and perhaps even taxed. The least controversial move will be first to improve the infrastructure in and around Sictive Car. Crumbling roads and buildings do not inspire much hope that the government is looking after the common man, nor are they have much hope of an economy attempting to climb out of years of stagnation. Years and years of stagnation, must we say. Oh my goodness. Better already? Yes, please. Oh, and against Andre Zedanov. You're next, son. Workers. Uh, actually, I think schools actually might be even better than they used to be, if I remember correctly. Basic literacy. Yeah, you get more growth, and that's what we really want. More growth. Some schools. And maybe new workers after that. Army of the Republic. Oh, wow. There's not much here. Yeah. Ooh, that would be really good to do, but... Yeah, actually, getting this one green as well now. Nice. Very good. Equipment, not bad. Croatian winter. Alrighty. 3% isn't too, or too bad. Or terrible. Well, there you can do that one too. Not bad. Assemble the armories. Alright. Infrastructure. Spend more money. State GDP. Could be worse. Ah, oh, the Army of the Republic. Comey has, uh, has always had, up on the paper release, a strong army. Since its inception, the Republic has remained free from foreign encroachment by the quantity of soldiers in the field. This has not always been evident to the man in Sixtive Car Streets. Riddled with corruption and factionalism, with entire units either underpaid or overpaid to ensure political reliability, the Army of the Republic has always been perceived as a straight mess, or a straight right mess. A significant fraction of its total strength is composed of militias and men outside the regular command structure. Fighting only in dire emergencies, now the Republic desires to expand outward a more regular state of affairs as needed. Two proposals have been t thought up on this army reforms, and it's important to decide rapidly on which one the Republic prefers. Ain't too proud to hide. If you want to put that, please go ahead. Yay! We got Zidane. Now we can appoint a division. Nice. Commander's purged. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's still going down, which sucks, but whatever. Hey! Less drift from us, yes. I knew that would take to more time, so I think the one we chose ultimately is, of course, better, but whatever. Actually, you two are what? Oh, you two are the 18 combat. Then there's two elites, so. Elites! Ukta, huh? Well, by the time we get enough command power, which we have, like, no war support, which sucks. We should be okay. The Army of the Republic, very good. Reform a true army. Keep the militia structure. It's not bad. Uh, popular mobilization, this is just better to do it. Reform a true army. The first faction proposes scrapping every militia and integrating their men into a regular army. Those will be a daunting undertaking, stretching our current army structure to the breaking point. Countless militiamen will have to be screened for political extremism, and those that don't make the cut will no doubt be angry at losing their job and weapons. Completing the reform will take time and effort, but as the WRF has demonstrated in the 50s, a regular army can achieve miracles when properly organized. The Republic must end the militia's efforts to be safe internally and as well as externally. Oh, wow. Finland's having issues, huh? Nice. The Republic of Finland. I hope you guys are having a pretty good day. Oh, wow. Our deficit is really, 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 really bad right now. Ooh. You know what? Since we're here, I'm going to do the... I got to do that one first. Oh, that's really bad. I'm glad I looked at that real quick. Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. That spiked really hard. Of course, we, we are spending a lot of money here. Like, don't get me wrong. Eight divisions are quite costly, but 
In the end, it'll be worth it. I promise. I love them frills that he's got on that jacket. Ukta. Eh, yeah, so good worth Ukta, maybe. We'll see. Happy 64, everybody. Army of the Republic and Reform True Army next. I don't know why you choose the other one. Cost reduction? That's actually really good, but mission of a lockdown. A new Republican army. Commander Latoni stands doubtfully at his map. The plastic waterproofing has gone so worn places that interpreting the little dots he's drawn out on his pointless is, is a pointless exercise. And the woods around him swarm with mists, obscuring the stars he'd normally use for navigation. The compass is no help either. Half the darn compasses and HQ will barely work anymore, and this one has given up to the ghosts ahead of schedule. Darn this stupid, stupid, impromptu exercise, Sergeant Kuzmin snarls. Always a loyal follower, but never quite afraid to let support supporters know or superiors know what he thinks of them. Le Leon Leonti doesn't reply, staring only at the mist. There are some boundaries that would be thoroughly inappropriate to cross. The sanctity of command is one of them. As it clears into the mist, something clicks. Those faint figures aren't trees. They must be nearby hills. And if we make out the little hills, then he could scrab scrabbles up the map, checking the faint contour lines. If he's lucky, he can get the shape of two line marks down, like that one shape, like a little loaf of bread in the elongated ridge. Leonti is a grown man of 37 years, and he's been in and out of barracks for his entire adult life. It takes all he has to keep himself from sobbing. He knows for the first seven, eight years, or eight hours at least, where he is going. His salary and Kuzmin's are safe. Leonti and Kuzmin stumble into the fishing grounds five hours after the Misty Hill. They are among the 3,000 commanders out of a total of 7,200 who will survive without ejection from the Republican army of Komi. But as the army's retools and rebuilds itself, it begins to look less like a rabble, more like a fighting force. And it prepares to cast aside the boring and easily broken business of border defense for far, far lo larger horizons. Ooh, army XP is actually very valuable. Manpower is extremely important as well. Much to be learned here. Ooh, ooh, I want the manpower, but ooh, I'm going to go with the army XP for now. Like, the, for, for, the faster we can get that stuff done, the better, really. Mission of Vologda. To the west, General. Ivanov maintains a careful position of armed neutrality in, in Vologda. In the aftermath of the front's collapse, <clears throat> The good general decides that spilling the blood of Russian civilians for ideological squabbles was simply not worth it. The log has kept us uh, cordial, if bemused, relations with Comey's unstable republic. The Western Junta has long appreciated Comey's policy of welcoming all while disliking the resulting political violence. With the new minted, newly minted democratic government standing proud, it might be time to revisit this relationship. Comey and Vlog both face external threats from the front and from southern regimes. A diplomatic mission has thus been sent to Vlog to offer a treaty of peace and friendship between, of course, both nations. Apologies if I'm reading very quickly, but it is what it is. I just... I'm a fast fast reader. That's all. And I would like to raid, but whatever. We'll see what they say at Alliance for Peace, but... Elevate gifted officers. Dozens of smart and dedicated men have joined our army from their former militias. In Comey's hyper-competitive uh, period of political instability... One did not rise to the top without a good head on their shoulders. The integration of these men has done much to soothe the concerns of former militiamen about more purges and arrests of the militias. It has also brought us a treasure of uh, institutional experience. Veterans that have fought in the West Russian War helped defend Comey's auxiliary militias are now pouring into our army and helping redefine its doctrines for, of course, the better. Inaugurated president? Very good. Very good. Oh, darn it. We now we have 20 armies. Uh, I want to raid. Yeah. Do you want to be buddies? We'll raid you probably along the way, but do you want to be buddies? <laughs> if we raid them and get them, I'll be, uh, that would be funny. Better arty is going to be so important. Just more soft attack is so good. We have supply issues here too, so. You know, maybe we'll raid them after we see what they say. And of course, we'll do stuff down here too, so. We get literally no political power every single day. Holy crap. Well. They accept the request! Let's raid them! Great news comes from the city of Alagda, across the frontier. A diplomatic mission in which we recently employed has enjoyed great success. It seems that the regime ruling the town is supportive of our efforts to create bilateral relations and has welcomed the mission with open arms. Now, we can initiate traded resources and arms for the benefit of both of us and Vologda, as well as discuss our future steps. Now that the talks with them are n not a rare occurrence, but a possibility of every single day. We must not forget that the goals of this diplomatic effort do not stop at minor trade deals and a vaguely cordial relations. This optimal outcome would be for Komi and Vologda to enter a full alliance determined to protect themselves from the surrounding enemies that may appear. 
They may be socialist, monarchist, or fascist, but no matter what, the two states ha will have to band together to fight them off, of course. And we gain enough diplomatic sway. We could even use this to our advantage in our expanding. But for now, our ambassador is doing excellent work of cooperating with authorities and gaining the trust. Just as planned. If you want to read about an alliance for peace, please go right ahead. Freedom of movement. Establish economic ties. As Vologda and Komi get closer, their respective economies continue rising from the decades of bombings and warlordism. Trade links that had already been significant during the anarchy are being strengthened by the day it is at this light. It is essential for our official trade policies to be established between the two allies. The strategic industries will, from both sides will be integrated, helping both Komi and Vologda to increase their military readiness. Joint investment schemes have been discussed to help lift up the civilian economy of the course of both nations. Uh, 97% still not bad. Could be better, but whatever. Let us go. Wanna raid? I wanna kill them off, man. What are you looking at? Like, oh, it's not bad. Coup in Paraguay? Enough already for now. Which actually is kind of impressive. Could use some more, probably, engine. What do we have them? Good engineers? Yeah, we do. Recon would be nice. We don't have enough guns, though. We'll see. Freedom of movement. The frontier between warlords and Russia is often more than a, a theoretical concept, consisting of a long range of military checkpoints and demilitarized zones plagued by bandits or lawlessness. While in theory there had been no law prohibiting movement between Vologda and Komi, in practice doing so required several levels of military approvals for private citizens. Traders have long used to carry their stacks of documents and military checkpoints. A new treaty is in the works, providing legal rights for Vologda and Komi citizens to cross the border unimpeded. It was no doubt help friendship and partnership lost among our nations and mutual defense. While Vologda may not be totally ready to join any of our future wars of liberation, their Generals have agreed to a strong mutual defense treaties. In the event of an attack on one side, the others expect to declare war on the invaders. This defensive alliance will free up much needed resources for the Komi's Republican army. Contingency plans for defensive wars will no longer use the hypothesis that the Komi Vologda frontier requires constant military defense. Likewise, the Vologdan army will be able to be free to tend to its own business, confident in the safety of its eastern flank. And then, uh, something about the three foes. Between three foes. Citizens, my friends, our republic is in grave danger. To the north lies the remnants of the Soviet Union. Hanabites failure is angry at our independence. Even as we speak, the northern Red Army plots are undoing. To the south and east, things are not any better. The looted Tsarist remnants wish to turn back the clock and reimpose the shackles of autocracy on our free citizens. In this project, they resemble our eastern neighbors and gain the theocracy. Blends Russia's woes not in the evils of German fascism, but on the anger of an unforgiving god. These madmen believe that only by subjugating Russia to the church's whim will the people be saved. The Republicans, or the Republic, will reject this madness. It's not a cabal of communists or Tsarist military officers that can free Russia, nor can its salvation come from the subservience to crazed monks. The only power strong enough to free Russia is its citizens. We must be on our guards. Extract from President Nikolai Voznesensky's speech to the Republic. If you'd like to read about passionately hidden, please go right ahead, but one cigarette can't hurt, but Vologda joins the votes to join Comey. Celebrate citizens of Comey today, Vologda joins the Republic. The offer for merging the administration has been welcomed by the semi-authoritarian government in Vologda. It seems that they still believe in democracy, and as such, they quickly answered a request with a positive response. Quickly. The two militaries ended all in limitations travel, to travel between their respective territory, and are working to tear down any border fences or checkpoints. The soldiers near the border have come together to celebrate the unification of meeting their Russian brothers that are no longer enemies on the other side. Meanwhile, representatives from the military regime we have recently united have arrived in Siktivkar, outlining the exact plans and process for the proper integration of the lands and the Republic. In the streets of both our capital and Vlogda, the citizens cheer on our government and the flag of our nations wave proudly across our domain. This is truly a day of glory. Peace for now, though. Perhaps uh, just a passing dream, the streets of our capital are quiet for once. A few families are seen walking where once thugs manned barricades and checkpoints. The, report or police, uh, the police report echo this anomaly. Peace seems to have descended on Siktiv Car. Fragile peace, perhaps, for the dem demons of civil strife might return if we are not vigilant. A fragile peace of our rivals in Western Russia try to end our democratic experiment. A peace, nonetheless, and one we intend to defend this by force. Citizens, much remains, m much remains to be done. We must be vigilant so that our nation's future is not dashed against the rocks of war nor the chaos of internal conflict. Negotiate with Vologda. It's time to revisit our relationship with the Western neighbor. It, our first visit to Vologda at the dawn of the Unification Wars was mainly concerned with military matters for our young Republic was surrounded on three sides with dangerous regimes. Now that Komi stands tall, we must ask Vologda's government about deeper integration. The men of Vologda are famous for their opposition to wars of aggression against fellow Russian citizens. And now we ask them for help in our grim unification of Western Russia, no matter how they felt about us before. The fusion of our two nations. It's a difficult decision for Vologda's leadership, but Russia, long divided, must unite again. We can only hope that our neighbors understand this sentiment. Oh, you're not going that fast, either. Okay. 
And now they got even bigger. Dang it, that sucks. Can we actually... Can we try to raid them? We could try. We need more of that, but... No one wants to try to raid us. Sadness. Sadness ours. But we do have nine divisions. It's not bad. Not bad. Nothing there. Unfortunate, I know. Um, anything here? Nothing here either. So these guys got bigger. Hopefully they go to war with these guys down here first. And hopefully we annex Vologda. And we take these guys out one-on-one, -on -one, which is going to be a giant pain in the tuchus. We have, like, no manpower, too. Which is not good. At least got more stability and social democracy, I guess. I guess that's good. Merge institutions. Today is a glorious day, for Vlog has agreed to peacefully fuse with our nation. Soldiers that used to belong to the two nations have crossed the border, not in conflict, but in celebration as politicians and commanders meet to discuss how to best both merge both sets of institutions. <clears throat> Battles will be fought not between brothers, but between conflicting bureaucratic standards as torrents of inks are spilled instead of blood. Paper pushers of both nations have spar sparred verbally, while inwardly cheering at the peaceful nature of this conflict. And outside, people celebrate the good news of the new republic. Admin efficiency begins to be slowly improve. Nice. Awesome. Oh. Oh, you're fighting the Aryan Brotherhood already? Holy crap, that's really fast. That's not good. Oh, that just means I'm, I'm probably going to end up having to do funky stuff to take these guys out. Russian Democratic Council, huh? Oh, go to Bachev. How are we doing down here? Uh, oh, Borman, you, you've been cut off, huh? Or, or they, can you just push through the state? Oh, you could probably just put through. Oh, okay. Oh, Vyakreis. Okay. A letter to the legislature. Um, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. This is from Zukov, so. Rocking up the wrong tree. Begin the talks. A letter of cooperation. Hmm. I'll read this one anyways. The legislature of the Komi Republic. Greetings from the front, your old ally. We come to you in peace, this letter being our olive branch. In recognition of our common democratic traditions, we address this letter not to the president of the republic, but its legislature. The front has no hostile intentions as president against the republic, nor the will to subvert its democracy. The front recognizes that both it and the republic has had a long, often hostile history. Today, however, the front is willing to put it all behind. Should the republic wishes to do so, we uh, solemnly ask in the name of democracy and socialism that the republic join us as comrades once again, let brothers and sisters link their hands in a new march for the future, and let our enemies tremble. We implore that the republic of Komi would see reason. To your south lie the perils to your democracy, the Aryan Brotherhood, the emperor now restored in Biaka, as well as a liberation army whose intents remains unknown. And joining our arms together, we protect ourselves against domination from forces hostile to Lenin and a Marxist dream of communism. And are joining us, we would like to recall the images of Rome and its Italic allies as one united power. No one shall challenge the might of our armies in the field, or the Republic's person on the fronts, or personnel in the front's experience. None can stand uh, against us for long. In addition, all crimes committed during the West Russian War shall be rendered moot. We implore you to gain a see reason, and we expect a match immediately. Signed, Marshal Grigory Zukov. Begin the talks. Mm. Nah. Defensive strategies. The work that began during the earlier reforms of the Republican Army is now complete. The Army's commanders now present to the civilian authorities several military plans as well as new doctrinal recommendations. The doctrinal, doctrinal ideals will help us modernize our Army and train a new generation of soldiers and officers. The military plans provide a wide range of military campaigns against neighboring threats to the Republic's safety. It is likely that the civilian leadership will bring a few recommendations of its own, nevertheless. Both generals and politicians are confident in the Republic's capacity to destroy its closest foes. Well, let's hope so, son. Let's hope so. As much as I want to do this one, I just want to just raid if we possibly can. Nice. Oh, how much longer? That's quite a while. Oh, we are getting dangerously close. I might do temp tax hike. Can we do anything else around here? Can we go to war with somebody? Can we at least annex Vologda? What's going on? Like, come on. Some investments would be nice to do as well. Come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry the heck up. I don't want to go over this at all. Right now, we should be upgrading ourselves, right? Oh, we're not. Oh, above a real GDP growth, which sucks. Oh. Oh, yeah, we're sucking pretty hard here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um. Uh, I don't want to hurt ourselves doing while doing this, but... We have a lot of naval XP, and someone's trying to start us, sort of fight against us, huh? Well, marching in the old capital, huh? Holy crap! That's a lot of strength. Well, try to raid against them. See what we can do. If it goes well, great. If not, hey, look at that manpower, though. Whoa! Now that's pretty darn nice.
All right, Blue Water Navy, sure, why not? We'll grab that one, because we could really use that one, right? Totally, 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 totally. Five, four, let's see what happens. Uh, can we core anything? Or do we just get all those cores? Oh, do we just literally just get all those? Oh, get them all those cores. Well, that's really nice. That's actually really awesome. How many days do we have left? Got a couple days left. This is not going to be good, is it? No, it's not. Stratagems. Fill the gaps. Well, event every every eventuality has been planned. Every threat has been assessed. The Republic, surrounded by enemies, has turned every settlement into a castle to protect the flames of freedom and democracy. Now citizens must become warriors to fill the gaps in their defenses. Lest the enemy storm through, a final call to arms has been issued. Lest fit men can serve in the interior, farmers can, rejoin, can join regional auxiliary militia to support the Republican army. Our nation is to survive this darkest hour. We must stand and fight to arms, citizens. To arms. Oh, yes. Oh, we got this one, too. Oh, it's so nice before we do anything else. Yay. Fill the gaps. Execute plan black. Execute plan red. The comets have long sown the seeds of conflict within our nation, and for this they shall root the tempest. The front has squashed or squandered its opportunity to save Russia from the fascists and its arrogance. Arch Angus has not sought peaceful reunification with us, but instead has sent thugs and radicals to undermine our democracy. Yet, we have expelled the communist threat from our republic, and now the Republican army shall eradicate the red menace from Western Russia. Okay, seriously, why can we not do this yet? Come on. Please, please just pay. Please just pay. Come on. Nice, there we go. Nice, good stuff, good stuff. Schools, power tools, schools. There's not much, but it's honest money. Go, 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 go. Get to the god dang line, these ding dongs. Some of you are already there, which is nice. Holy crap, is there a lot of lag in this, this, this mod? My god, you guys take so long to get there. I mean, this division for division, we should be okay, right? Like, some of our guys are really flipping beefy. There we go. Now they're going to war with us. Let's go and save, anyways. And hopefully, we can do this okay like. I'm not expecting greatness from this war, but. We should do okay, and we're actually running out of grid power as well, which is not very good. Let's get through loot regardless. See what y'all can do. Hold on if you possibly can. Hold on to that armor if possible. I want to circle that division. Kill it. Arrival of the Anti-Communist Guard. Um, if you were new to this, please go ahead. I've read this one before, so there you go. Yay. Oh, would you look at that? Fighting over the river does kind of suck, but that's okay. What matters is that we can destroy enemy divisions. It's all I flip and care about. And come on. Oh my god, why are you taking so long? You are going to... Oh my god, I hate this so much. Fill the gaps is nice. You plan red. You will not do that. Defeated? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, no, that's a bunch of crap. Yeah, the WRF is just ridiculously strong. I hate, I hate this part of the game. The campaign is just, it's so bad. It's just so bad. Uh, plan white. Eh, let's probably not do that stuff yet. A new democratic foundation. The Republic, once seeing its electoral system frayed and closing down due to extremism, must see democracy flourish again. Regenerating the interest and trust our citizens have in this democratic process will be tough, especially coming on the tail end of our efforts to end political extremism once and for all. We must accomplish this nevertheless if the democratic center's powers to be assured. Letting go of our power to design electoral districts now that they have been sanitized will help restore confidence, as it will the ability to call snap elections to remove governments that are widely unpopular with the electorate. Finally, propaganda campaigns extolling the virtue of engaged citizens will hopefully draw crowds once more to polling stations. It's so stupid. It's so stupid how, like, strong these guys are. Don't get me wrong, it does make sense why they're strong, but still, it's, I hate it. It's so easy to play as them. Yeah, no, you go up here. Now I have Doma? No, you ding dong. I want you to go up here. Jesus. Why are you so dumb? So stupid. What is this? Resistance? Yeah. Way more of equipment. There you go. 
You do this now. They literally have no supplies in there, so. There you go. That's much better. Bing bong. Take it all. Alright. No, nope, you guys go there. Oh my god, this mod is so incredibly laggy. They've made it so laggy. I love this mod to death, but like... So laggy. I can imagine how some of you guys even try to play this mod yourselves. What? No, you... Ding dongs! I said, I don't, oh my God, you two do that! Oh my goodness! Jesus Christ! Boy, four is certainly special. We'll give it that. Uh, we lost two thousand, which is not bad. We got twenty thousand, which is pretty good, actually. This could, uh, I'll be honest, this could be going a lot worse for us. How are we suffering from supply? I guess it is makes sense because the road's right there. But then, you guys, you shouldn't have any supply either. Ay ay ay! Just keep that in red, which is good. Democratic Foundation. Formalizer claims. Our enemies in the Revolutionary Front call us secessionists and traitors. The Tsar and Zviaka and his cronies dismiss us as a sect of Karklik. Others use our official name of the Komi Republic, seeing as the mere local curiosity standing in their projects of uniting Western Russia. Those names will be relegated to the past. Our government prepares a new declaration, announcing that we alone have the legitimacy to rule all of Russia as a Russian Republic. All of our institutions are to change and reflect this. Territory occupied by our military will be merely territorial re territory returning to a rebel rule. Democratic annexations will be taken under consideration. We're undertaken under the auspices of bringing rogue provincial governors and usurpers back into the fold of the reborn Russian Republic. Our regional rivals are not likely to take this seriously. As such, we must be ready to approve our claims through force of arms, or through the silver tongue of our diplomats. Nevertheless, the world shall know that the Russian Republic, killed, the re killed by the Bolsheviks, is back. He said that'll be nice. Next time you hunt down the opposition, though. Hmm. Keep going in. Do well. Succeed. Don't fail. Too much. There's no one go. Oh my god. Why are you not. Oh. Stupid. Hoi 4. Stupid, 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 stupid. You should be able to win here pretty easily. Yeah. Are you, are you kidding me, bro? Go there. See what, see what the enemy will do after we do, go that, to that tile. Ah, they found us. Okay. Don't let him move. Yeah, just make sure that they can always win division, win there, huh? Oh my god, why are you taking so long? Jesus. Uh, why do they suck so much? Still only 64, which is not bad. Um, at this point, let's go do Svetlana Bukharina. Bukharina. New election cycles. Now that the Republic's bases are strong and secure, it's time to turn a new leaf. New elections taking place in the nationalized and cleansed political arena will be scheduled. It is perhaps a risky move to entrust the fate of our project to the citizens. No riskier, however. Then ruling in content of majority to further the end of small political cliques like our enemies in the far left and far right intended it to do. Our new electoral cycle is set to hold elections around the time our army and diplomatic service is set to have reunited many regions of Western Russia. Holding an election in freshly annexed or liberated territory must be difficult. But through our this, but through this, our new citizens will see our commitment to our democratic ideals. Ensuring democracy. The first villager to see the deputy sweeping the tides as a or sweeping the streets as a child of perhaps ten or eleven years. His steps echo down the cobblestone path well before he reaches the sweating uh, suit clad man struggling with a broom. He stops for a moment oh, for a while, and whatever passes for stupefaction in the youth makes a face and walks away. The deputy calls after him, Have a good day, the governor's here for you if you need anything. The next few villagers arrive all at once in a station wagon almost up, uh, falling apart with rust and disuse. The deputy calls out to them too, shouting, Have a good day. The governor Comey works only for you. 
Muted laughter resounds from the car's cabin. A face reaches out from the what must have once been a window. Have a good day, deputy. Must be a lonely day in the office, yes? The deputy beaming turns to reply, but the station's wagon's little growl cuts him off before he can say anything. He looks into the massive cloud of smoke, still smiling and carries on. So it continues through the morning, the sweeping of the stray leaves and the urban garbage of Comey's 57th district into giant piles and the disposal of these piles into burlap sacks. People stare curiously. Once or twice, visitors ask for signatures, something which the deputy is too happy to provide. Always reminds people he meets to vote and keep the government accountable, something which they can also fulfill by writing to himself. As noon towers over Comey, the Republic, the deputy, stumbles into his office, nearly tripping over the carpet. The smile disappears from his face, glowing. He begins to laboriously tap a transcript of his day's endeavors, starting with the number of people he has greeted and the number of We Believe in the Comey Republic badge he has given out, nearly breaking the typewriter with his hammy fingers he writes Day 1 Publicity Campaign Complete. Bros, you are a motorized division for a reason. Move faster than this. Jesus Christ, what are we paying you for? Obviously, nothing. Bruh, you suckerinos really badly. This this division sucks. Oh my gosh, you are pathetically bad. Don't give me excuse that you have mud here or forest or infrastructure. I don't want excuses. Pathetic. There's nothing we can do about that division going back down there. But if we can snipe here and then come over here, then we'll be okay. Look at this lag. Oh my god, just why is it so bad? They really need to disable like some of these other countries so to make sure that they don't really process anything. Cause it's just it's too laggy sometimes, man. Is it paid though? Come on. Oh my god, I know it's over river, but Jesus, come on. You three go right here. You can encircle that division. I know for the love of God that you can. Gethsemane. Oh, you know about that, please go ahead. Who is it that betrayed her? And please, just kill off that division. It's not that difficult. These guys literally just make it more difficult than it actually has to be. And since that division is there, Ukta, let's see. I always get so negative when doing this, because it, it's, it's just so annoying. It's just so annoying. Once these guys go in, we'll, uh, there we go, go in. Immediately go in. Come on. My good giddy aunt. Jesus, why is it so bad? How are we losing? We're smashing the crap out of them here. There you go, that's good. How about right here? And you go right here. Thank God. I mean, why, it, why does it take so long? Why does it seriously just take so flippin' long? Good. Thank God. Jesus Christ, that's so stupid. I'll go that one. I'm not sure. Ah, oh, we're out of command part. God dang it. Uh, we'll probably read about this one. Execute Plan Black. The monks of Gainey see an angry god and the hardships that have fallen in Russia. They seek to atone for the nation's failings by uniting it in fearful repentance. We have a different idea for Russia's plight, one manufactured by evil men and facilitated by the baseness of the human heart. If God is a side, then it's definitely on our side. The side of compassion, mercy, of hope, and courage. To our east, theocrats speak of end times and of displeasure of the eternal. Our soldiers will prove on the battlefield that by losing faith in the Russian people, Gainey's fanatics have committed blasphemy on the highest order. Which, I mean, they no longer exist, so, I mean, whatever. No, you ding dong. No, 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 no. Oh, come on. Go this direction. You, oh, you flipping morons. It's just way for. I mean, this mod is just way too laggy nowadays. It's so bad. It's so bad. Like, I love it to death, but it's so. My apologies about that, everybody, but the game literally crashed on me, and basically, when I reloaded, I just decided to just finish off the WRF because Ark Uncles was completely open and. You might as well just take it. But now, Vyaka's gone to war with us, and we're having a, uh, we're having a time with them. Definitely a time. But we did do Execute Plan White. It's perhaps to the Tsar's credit that he has come back to Russia. Rather than live a comfortable, soft life in exile, but the fall of the Union has seen the rise of a new generation of Russians. Men and women who not idolize a fabled past of Russian autocracy. The Tsar and his cronies wish not for citizens, but for slaves and subjects, object in their subservience. 
The Republican army will set sure on the strength of the Russian nation, for these difficult times have forged a new generation of standard bearers for democracy and, of course, decency. So, uh, we're worth the outcome. We're race we had to race our soldiers down there, but room to breathe. Our enemies will soon all lie defeated. Their foreign people mill around, some feel relief at their liberation, and others struggle to make sense of the defeat of the Tsar, communism, or fanaticism. Our soldiers' sacrifice has earned us room to breathe. Beyond our border look more dangerous, ambitious tyrants dream of subjugating all of Western Russia to their whims. For now, however, we have some time to consolidate. Our enemies held great amounts of industrial equipment, war supplies, and population. Already the Republic has gone from one of the weakest factions to one of the powerhouses of Western Russia. Now, the soldiers have been allowed some rest. Our poor bureaucrats are working triple overtime to somehow integrate mountains or resources into a system not designed for population and territory of that magnitude. As the work progresses, our integration of these new assets will give us significant advantage in the upcoming wars. Nice. We do have Warplan White here too, and Warplan Black, because we already ended Warplan Red, so. Um, other than that, not much else has really happened. So as you can tell, uh, we're at war, and well, we're pretty much just starting in the middle of the war, so. Let's see what happens. I do apologize for being any any part negative this in this campaign thus far. It's just, some of these things are just so annoying to deal with. How are... Oh, it's fighting over river. That makes sense. That's a bunch of BS, but it makes sense. Actually, division-wise, we're maybe relatively equal-ish. Um, it's not fair that we had to deal with all these guys first and come back over here, but, you know, whatever. Um, we're gonna make these guys pay. They're gonna play in serious blood. Uh, I'll give us some more time for us. Let's get some more organization. Okay, come on. Vyatka... They, they're, they're extremely strong. Our guys suck, though. Our guys suck a lot. Oh, they're having their own issues, that's good. Good here. Come on, why, why do you guys take so flippin' long to move? I just don't understand, like, the IFVs. Of all things, IFVs should move way faster than what they're currently moving. Move. Jesus Christ, move. Wow, we have negative four. Holy crap. I should have had more production units, but... There's... My god. I hate coring so much. Coring sucks, but we have to core. My god. What are we doing for all this stuff, though? Eh, that's not bad. Come on, you guys wanted to go to war with us, and now you don't want to. I do not understand. Bunch of hypocrites, if you ask me. You should easily be able to beat that division up. Easily. But maybe not. Hopefully. I don't know, we'll see. You attack us, we attack you. Good. Not good there. Not good. We can't even beat up Militia? You know a nation's overpowered when you can't even beat up Militia with, what, 18 combo with infantry? That's stupid. That's incredibly stupid. Who designed that? Oh my gosh. Oh, good. Good. Kill them off, because we're going to go murder every single last one of these pieces of buttholes. Oh, this is stupid. We can't even defeat Militia. What to Why? Why? I hope these guys burn. I hate Western Russia with a burning passion. It's such a god-awful place to fight in. Especially as Comey. I hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. If I could force the attack, I totally would right now. But, we still gotta do security measures. It doesn't help that we have negative 16% war support. Come on. Shevarevich. How are they able to do so well against us? Like... While well, they're fighting Samara as well. You know, someone's overpowered. When you when can hold off on two different fronts completely. <sighs> yeah, that's pretty overpowered. Holy crap. They are OP, man. How can they do this much damage? It literally boggles the mind. Bro, get back there. I don't want to attack there yet. If we can't, I'd love to just cut these guys off. We're probably going to get circled in the end, but still. How? How do they get all the way up here? What the heck are the divisions doing? <sighs> yeah, so we'll let the, let the motorized go. Remember about that, please go ahead. 
Oh, direct operations, not yet. Yeah, if anything, if Samara gets all the territory, I mean, that's that's a bunch of crap. You can't even win against Militia. I mean, what the heck? Who designed that? You can't win against Militia. That's so bad. So bad. Well, everyone, at this point, I just use cons commands. I am sick and tired of this. Vyaka is overpowered. I spent an extra half an hour recording and I decided to delete it because I was just being negative the entire time. And I'm still pissed off because Vyaka is overpowered. I lost 90,000 men. I cheated to give myself manpower because this is ridiculous. Look how many divisions we've left. I lost so many divisions. We had nine. Earlier we had like 14. We have nine because of how overpowered Vyaka is. And the devs don't do anything about it, which is pathetic. But if you like to about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. But I'm... I'm it, it's so infuriating to see how poorly made Biaka is to fight against. Like, oh my god. It is one of the worst experiences you can have in TNO. It's so bad. It's so incredibly bad. I cannot recommend anyone playing Western Russia in TNO. Biaka is overpowered completely. They were fighting us and Samar at the same time. It looks like Samar has been nerfed since, like, the No Step Back DLC, but, like, I I'm so pissed off. It's not even funny. And the devs don't do anything about Biaka. It's so sad. Like, no one should play Western Russia. It's god awful at this point in the, the TNO lifespan. But, onto Unity. Plan red, white, and black were about sheer survival. Now, our Republic turns its eyes to the south and seeks not only to survive but to thrive. Projecting military power to quash dangerous warlords will greatly enrich our legitimacy, prestige, and resources on top of keeping us safer. Our general plans are not as detailed this time around, mostly based on the psychological profile of our enemies and theoretical conflicts using pre anarchy maps of Russia. As such, much of our newly acquired resources will be used to deal with whatever warlord has lasted long enough to become one of our neighbors. But it, 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 it's not fun. They've ruined the fun by making some of these warlords way overpowered. Like, some of them should be strong, don't get me wrong. Some of them de should definitely be quite strong. But some of them are just fucking overpowered. And I'm, I don't ever curse my videos, but oh my god. Like, it shows that the devs only want Vyaka to win. Not even the WRF anymore. It's so bad. It's so fucking bad. It's not, it's not, it's not fun. It's just not fun. What are you wondering about? Plan Grey, please go ahead. Or Plan Green. There you go as well. Plan Violet. Eh, I don't think I think they're already dead. So, the fate of Yaka's general. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Uh, release them and their positions. No, God, no. Yeah, no. Kill them. Kill every single last one of them because they're just overpowered. If you want to read about the Plan Yellow, please go ahead as well, as well as negotiate with Bashkiria. But at this point, I'm done. I've had to use consequence in any of my TNO videos, and at this point, I I don't care. I really don't care. I've had such a bad experience with combat so often in. You know that I just don't care anymore. It's just not fun. Like it, it's pathetically bad. Why, why should anyone? Why should anyone do it? It doesn't make any sense. Why should anyone even try to do the combat in TNO, especially in Western Russia? <laughs> Please let me know though in the comments if you have ever had a bad experience with uh, Plan Violet. Eh, let's do negotiate with Tetris first. Okay. Uh, like just combat wise like it's one of the worst things you could do but uh negotiate or consolidate gain resources most of our foes in southwestern russia have been defeated the republic stands triumphant once more while the flood of new land to administer is not uh the exponential growth seen at the end of the red plan white and black integrating your new conquest into a republic has taken time now that our armies are taking well and rest it is once again time for our republic servants to wander into these new territories and catalog everything industrial plants cities and mines and population centers all important resources for a growing nation all as well as fed back into the Republican army, covering equipment and manpower losses and giving our new men, our men new weapons. On the horizon, new enemies. Our men must be equipped for any eventuality. Ensure industrial preparedness. Uh, That's fucking overpowered. I'm sorry I'm cursing so much, but three 75% cost reductions. The devs just don't know what they're doing, <laughs> but secure, securing it. Operational integrity seeks to gather men, methods of doing and material into one unified whole. Mechanized tactics cannot exist without supply and logistical regiments. On once in the field, tanks and logistics and vehicles are vulnerable to aerial attacks requiring aerial support of our own. The deployment of costly vehicles and their experienced operators relies on the assumption that neither men nor material are in danger of destruction, and thus any deployment also requires an intel core. Operational integrity is thus a complex system of simple parts brought together to perform critical military tasks. Our soldiers and generals have integrated every lesson of past conflicts into a new way of doing things, long before a tank rolls out of their new factory. Its purpose is well understood by our military. Our enemy shall learn to fear this oneness of purpose in action. 
Why? It's one thing if it was one. Like, one is more balanced than three. But you get this after you have to defeat Vyaka. Why? Why? Ugh, the design is just not there for Tiano, at least in its current state. Three is overpowered. Two is a lot. One is, I think, appropriate. But three? Three? No. If you want to bet two more alone, please go right ahead. But, like, three is way too much. Like, because of how No Step Back changed land doctrines and doctrines in general, three for 75% is flipping overpowered. That is completely overpowered. You can just blitz through your land doctrine, strong, be stronger than most of the other enemies here. Holy crap. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the devs just don't know what they're doing anymore, man. They just don't. So, I, like I said earlier, I, I gave myself manpower. I gave myself all the manpower that I lost. Cause I, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done playing fair in TNO. The man the Coraloyable? Out of all the deputies come from the former front territory, none has attracted as much attention as the recent election of Alexander Yakovlev, a fellow with a DSMP, born to a peasant family in the uh, Coraloyovo. His father served as a Red Cavalry man in the Civil War and became the leader of a small collective farm in his village. Yakov loved, uh, served in the Red Army during the German invasion and the horrors he experienced on the front, including most, almost losing an arm during the invasion. With the collapse of the Soviet Union and the fracturing of the country into multiple warlords, Yakov Love's life has been shattered as the strength and true of, truth of Marxist-Leninism right in the front of his eyes. The destruction of his country and ideology forced him to look at socialism through a different lens, one in which human happiness and quality of life triumph ideological purity. After winning a difficult election in the recently conquered Akangosk Oblast against the wishes of the DSM, P establishment. He has established himself as a prominent freshman in the Oblast, intelligent and reform-minded. It remains to be seen whether his left-wing credentials can gain him the political power he deserves. More the merrier. The more the merrier. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, what are the devs even doing at this point? Oh, watch out! They declared war on us, huh? Let's see. Are these guys overpowered or are they not overpowered? Let's see, devs. Let's see. Arrested. 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 We're done. We've done enough. And these guys, most of them, are 27 combo with, with artillery. Should have waited for this one to get done first, but whatever. We actually have green here? Can we actually do well, maybe? No? Grid power is so bad. And why is this so easy? I mean, come on. It clearly shows Viaka's overpowered. And Samara got a hard nerf in the No Step Back DLC. Oh my goodness, release the update. Consolidate uh, gain resources, which is nice. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, this is pathetic. <sighs> TNO, TNO, TNO. What have the devs done to you? Industrial management is nice, though. Two thousand versus five thousand, not really a big difference. Ooh. It's quite unfortunate. Well, congrats on winning there. So don't die too much. Come on, go on in. Oh, please. Oh. 
and then ensured industrial preparedness. Building an industrial economy from the ground up using factories taken over in wars and of conflict is not a precise science. Many factories that fall in their hands are geared to produce the same things as other industrial areas in their possession. Russian warlords usually function on the autarkic production system that sees everything crafted locally. Conversely, there are many goods that are produced nowhere, as the divided Russian territories do not possess an economy large enough for things beyond basic military weapons. All this is beginning to change as we develop an integrated industrial policy prepared for a wide range of scenarios and needs. Our once rare items are now being produced in large quantities as the Republic synergizes its various economic sectors to prevent any future penury of goods, and just supply chains of complex outputs, outputs are, being, are appearing in Western Russia. I'm just not interested in conflict in TNO. They've ruined it. The devs have ruined it at this point. Or at least, you know, they haven't modified enough to work with the supply system, but Plan Brown. What more is there to say concerning General Vlasov and his men? The death warrant of every single man of the ROA was a sign with the blood of countless Russian soldiers killed on the order of General Fascists. German Fascists. It's a mystery how Vlasov can keep talking of Russian liberation when he and his acolytes have ensured that the suffering of the Russian people would last another miserable decade of steel and death. It would not be as accurate to depict the men of the ROA as spineless cowards, for they have shown courage time and time again when using their German training. To take on impossible odds in the West Russian war, all we can hope is that these pigs in human form feel at least some fear of their upcoming judgment. The liberation of tomorrow be must begin. really sad. It's all just so sad. Happy 1966 to everybody. Do all my complaining. Hope you're having a, a good year. A good year. Screw it. Give me taxes. Give me the money. I want it. That's fine. I just don't care. I just don't, really don't care. Uh, anything here that's special? Oh, just would be nice. Good, Granko. You're just not as good. Yeah, we want this guy instead. Valentine. I mean, is 27 come with not optimal? Is it not worth it? That's stupid. Three reduction bonuses? They need to spread those up more. Clam Brown. Got a code brown here. Brownie Towny. And then consolidating the Republic. What well, matters? Well, military and diplomatic conquest of the shattered lands of Western Russia is all well and good. We must not forget the greater civilian and bureaucratic apparatus that we must establish over our new lands. With West Russia now under our control, the time has come to begin the consolidation of the Republic. Wearing censuses, ensuring that our institutions can handle our new population, setting up supply lines, installing local leaders, and set and the thousand other tasks needed to set up a sustainable state. I think we're political party, which is nice, actually. Very nice. They're yeah, both of you go away. It's going to take a lot of men for that. This is nothing compared to Vyatka. I mean, come on, man. Woodloaf. No one gives a crap about the West African War. People with no time care about the West African War. More production units? That's nice. Alright, let it auto save because it loves auto saving a whole bunch. Or the game will literally crash. So sad. Oh, it took Samara. Taking all these places around here and still not enough, huh? Plan Brown. Let's go with Brown. Faith and Democracy? Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, they unify. Eh, it's like a good time. 
Yeah, that stuff is all good to do. Agriculture. What's well, Russian cult? Census, not culture. Russia's a big place, and while we do not own anywhere near all of it, our public occupies a significant portion of the former Soviet Union's landmass. The teeming multitudes of people across our lands have not yet been counter and audited. In order for democratic institutions and basic social services to have a chance of working at all, we must make a detailed census of our population. Census takers, many accompanied by armed police, will be dispatched from regional centers in order to alleviate this issue immediately. Kazan, thank you, I'd like Kazan. One Kazan, please. And that should be it. There we go. See? Honestly, that's a cakewalk compared to uh, Biatka. The devs should, still feel, should absolutely feel ashamed of themselves. I mean, it, 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 it's not fun. It's just not fun. Who wants to, who, who wants to play this? It, it's, if it's going to be this bad. Here, deploy. Because the combat's all made up anyways. Who cares, right? Who cares about we do well or poorly? Uh, you two convert. Infantry's going to lead the way. Infantry template one. Nope. 27 combo with. Should be it. Hmm. Get through one more anti tank. Does give you a little more soft attack, hard attack, stuff like that. We'll go in isolation. That sucks for you all. That's the organization, though. Hmm. Consulting the Republic, Western Russian Census. Can we show you raid anybody else? Hmm. Oh. I guess we can kill off the poles. Little Polska? Well, I'll come back down here. After that, there's nothing else down there, so faith in democracy. Get the peasants on board. The final, most crucial part of the establishment of the new republic is securing a source of food and setting up systems through which peasantry may be able to once more prosper for years, many within the republic. Especially those in the frozen north have struggled under the weight of food insecurity, poor soil, and bad weather. Whether the fertile lands of the south once more attain, we are now free to organize a better arrangement between the peasantry and our workers, ensuring that all may prosper and be nourished by the republic's golden wheat. Where are we for agriculture? Why is poverty getting worse? Negative growth? Sounds like a dev problem. Mm, yeah. Yes. The Iron Governor. With the recent integration of Ninsi Novgorod, formerly known as Gorky, into the Republic, as considered essential to establish legitimate governance within it, both the, it and the surrounding region. Elections for all positions, legislative and executive, were therefore announced and subsequently held. Although many races were competitive, one particular, the Governor's, was not. Konstantin Katushev, a local engineer and industrialist, and notable for his long standing support of the, and advocacy for broadly liberal policies, won by a considerable margin. Katushev, who entered the regional political sphere as soon as he was able, quickly negotiated with and secured the endorsement of the SMR. Commonly known as the Young Reformers, began proclaiming their general position to the electorate, proving himself as an exceptionally skilled political organizer. He quickly established both a robust and rapidly expanding political infrastructure, greatly expanding the local awareness of and support of for democratic ideals. This infrastructure proved an insurmountable challenge for his opponents, as though several other campaigns outspent Katushev. Katushev by considerable margins, none were able to significantly challenge increasing momentum displayed by his own. Uh, experts agree that the Iron Governor, as he has been increasingly referred to, is likely to leverage that infrastructure in order to further establish Nitsi Novgorod as a stronghold, both for the reformers and for the political adherents. A rising star indeed. Well, that's nice. You better pay that tribute. Nice. And where are we at? Two. Schooling could be better. Which one we just upgrade? And equipment. Yeah, that's right. Yep, let's get ready for Onega then. Um, mm, agriculture schools is not bad though. Schools would be really good to get though. Education in Western Russia. We come up upon the resolution of the Onega issue. We get a new research slot. Let's get through all this stuff first, maybe. Yeah, let's get the peasants on board. Yeah. That'd probably be probably the best thing to do. Uh, we could probably actually do that next time too, so. I mean, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. We get overextended administration, which does suck, so. But we'll probably begin the next episode by going to war with them, but activate the factories. We'll spend a lot of money, get some production units. Ooh, industrial experience actually gets worse. Across the Republic, factories and other works of technological skill line are used and unprepared for lack of expertise needed to run them. We must restore them at once, and soon the people of the Republic will be able to enjoy the prosperity that an industrial economy shall bring. Cars once more shall roam the roads of Russia, and our army shall be furnished with matching rifles, and our grand city streets shall be lit with constant incandescent electrical glow. A center capital. Sviktikar, the capital of our estimable Republic, has served us well and has a storied history as the most important city we possessed. In the dark days of our origin, however, 
A dilemma faces the government, one that is a simple matter of infrastructure, housing, and facilities which, which both to administer all of Russia. West Russia. The city of Yakin Samara, now they are cleansed of Tsars and fascist influence, respectively, have both been submitted as possible new capitals for the Republic. Most well, sectors of guards will love the town of Mary very well have come to move to more grandiose housing and faith in democracy, which we probably don't have any of them. Outside of the abortive Republic under Kerensky, Russia has never known true democracy of the sort that we wish to deliver to its people. Understandably and unexpectedly, the people are nervous and confused as polling booths are elected. Many peasants stay at home or attempt to submit blank ballots, fearful of the watchful eyes of the no longer existent NKVD. This will not do. We must enact a comprehensive program of democratic education, as well as communicate to the people well and truly what our goals and principles are. Democracy must stem from the people and may never bloom if the people do not have faith. What if you said, well, enjoy the video, even through all my rage and complaining and organ and and just lack of lack of love. That the devs have shown to Western Russia. Please leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when I'll probably complain a little bit more, but do our best to keep pushing forward and uniting the rest of Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great Comey rest of your day.